Now, it looks like uh, Dr. Doom was right again. The last time that we spoke, Mark Faber called for stocks to rally from March to the end of April, and they look to be doing just that. But will the rally last even longer? Let's uh, ask Dr. Doom himself. We have Mark Faber, author of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report, and he joins us this morning from Singapore. Good to see you once again, Mark. So uh, what do you think about this rally? Will it last longer than just the end of April? Does it have some legs here? Well, I wish I knew, but uh, I think it's important to realize that many stocks actually made their lows already last October, and then fewer stocks made lows in uh, November, on November 21st, and then we had in the U.S. a 25% rally, and then we came off again into March 6th of this year, and intraday we bottomed out, and since then the market is up 26% in the U.S., but in March, although the indices were lower than last November, only very few stocks made new lows, and many markets in Asia didn't make new lows. In fact, if you take uh, markets like Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, from their lows, they're up now 40%. So I don't think that we will go and make new lows for these markets, because that would mean that these markets would have to tumble very significantly. And I think that the economic news whereas it won't be good, I think the rate of getting worse will slow down. And so the bullish analysts will immediately say, see, the economy has bottomed out, and combined with the stimulus packages, it will lift somewhat sentiment. So I think that after this rally we had since March 6, we need some kind of a correction, maybe around 5 to 10%. And after that, we can probably rally more into, say, July. Okay, so we're going to see a bit of a correction, right, Mark? Uh, when is that going to take place, and how deep do you think it will be? You said 10%, <laughs> but what's going to precipitate it? Well, I, I mean, we rallied on the S&P from 666 to above 840. We're now around 830. I think we can go down to around 750. But it's important that we don't go below the November lows on the S&P. And uh, after this correction, I think we should be able to rally somewhat more. Okay, well, Mark, you're also uh, an investor as well as an author. So as an investor, what are you doing in this uh, current rally? Are you selling into it or buying more? Well, I mean, I bought some resource shares last November and many resource stocks have actually doubled and trebled in values depending which ones you bought. The Newmont Minings of this world, uh, they have doubled in value since November. And the more speculative exploration companies, they, some of them have gone up three times from their lows. So these stocks I'm no longer particularly interested in. But I've been buying a little bit of banks here and there. Uh, more as a trade, because if I look, say, at the city group, it dropped from $57 to a dollar. I mean, it could easily, now it's around two and a half dollars. I think it could easily rebound to around five dollars. Whether it will afterwards go to zero or not, that remains another story. But all I'm saying is a lot of these companies, they've been so much decimated, and what they can now do is basically hand over their lousy assets to the government, in other words, to the taxpayer, and so they'll end up, I guess, with some viable business where they can increase fees and again cheat the taxpayer, who will then have to pay higher banking fees and takes over the bad assets of the banks. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. okay. world. Yes, it's a wonderful word, world, uh, Mark. Yeah. I'm going to take some viewer emails right now, and this one comes from Marty Law. He wants to ask, uh, will the Treasury bond bull market go bearish before 2010? The Treasury bond market, the long end, uh, the 10 years and the 30 years, have been in a bull market from September 21st, 1981, until December 18. 2008, when the 10 years on December 18, 2008, touched 2.0% uh, uh, yield and the 30 years 2.51. Since then, yields, despite mm -hmm. the intervention by the governments, 
have actually backed up. Well, basically, we had a long-term bull market in bonds, 1981 to 2008, and I think in 2009, we have now the beginning of a long-term bear market that will extend for the next 15 to 20 years. Okay, well, let's uh, turn to uh, U.S. stocks. Uh, Marcus, I really want to ask you about the S&P 500. You said it's going towards uh, 870. What does that mean for Asian stocks then? Well, I think, I mean, I'm not a prophet, and I can't tell you it, which day and at what price exactly an index peaks out. I think we had a very good rally from 666 to around 840. I think we can correct now. And afterwards into July, we can have a further rally. And for Asian markets, I think the Asian markets in terms of value are much better value than the S&P because don't forget that the low, last, at the end of the last, last year, the KOSPI, I mean the Korean index and the Japanese index were kind of at 20, 30 year lows. Uh, the S&P is not, nowhere near that low, relatively speaking. So I think that the Asian okay. markets, actually on every setback, should be bought. Mm. Okay, Mark, quickly, I want to ask you about the changes in the mark-to-market uh, -market, uh, accounting standards, but how do you think this changes the game? Well, I personally, I am market-to-market, or I mark-to-market -market my portfolio whenever I make evaluation. I don't say, well, the portfolio is down 50%. But I think it's actually worth 120% more than what the valuation is. I think mark-to-market -market is essential for the financial service industry to eventually become clean. Mark, I want to bring up more viewer emails and questions for you. First off, this comes from Tim Tesluck, and he says, Dear Dr. Faber, how do you see the end game playing out for the U.S. zombie banks? Well, good question. I think that for the time being, and you just showed a spot uh, about 10 minutes ago about Tim Geithner who wants to identify the bad and rotten apples in the system. Well, he should buy a mirror and stand in front of the mirror himself with Mr. Ben Bernanke and Mr. Larry Summers. There you have the rotten apples. Okay, Mark. Well, uh I think George Soros has also added his views uh, on this topic as well. So let me just ask you another viewer email, another viewer question for you. What are the strongest uh, Asian nations in which an American can easily invest in right now? Well, I think uh, if you're an American investor, depending whether you have an account that allows you to buy individual securities, but if you cannot buy individual securities, then I would buy ETFs on Hong Kong and Singapore and Taiwan and South Korea and also Japan. I think all the Asian markets look actually quite okay. But we had a strong rally already. As I said, in some cases, 40% up from the lows. And I think some profit-taking is overdue. But I would say to every buyer of Asian securities, I think that if you buy Asian securities over the next three months, for sure, in the next five to ten years, you will make money. Dr. Faber, I just want to jump in here if I can and ask you about the earlier question about U.S. banks. You're actually saying in terms of buying opportunity, look at the most leverage garbage companies, yes. quote unquote, the most yes. leverage garbage companies, and you're saying, you're actually saying that financials, U.S. financials offer actually the greatest rebound potential. C could you sort of explain it, yeah, yes. what you mean here? When you have a bear market, the garbage goes down the most. And when the bear market bottoms out, and I assume that on March 6, 2009, the market bottomed out, for the time being, whether in a year's time will be low or not, that I don't know. In the rebound, the garbage bounces back the strongest because it's 